Guys, happened again. I've seen this many times throughout my career. And I'm going to walk you through some of the problems that I've seen on this table because I had two of these come down yesterday. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Guys, welcome back. So, I had two surgical tables that came down yesterday and both of them had some interesting problems. One of them I've never seen before. The other one I've seen many times and it's such um, an interesting failure that I had to document the first time I could, which would be now. I've, I've seen this probably six, seven times, maybe more throughout my career. And this is the first time I'm able to get it on video so that you can see what's really going on. Anyway, let's go through the first problem I've seen. All right, let me switch this around so I can get you a better view. This is the Skytron 3602 Ultra Slide. Now, I've given you guys problems before with the slide and how we have to open up the hydraulic valve assembly and do some maintenance down there, clean it out. But this time, I've got a whole different problem going on. So yesterday, I had a table exactly like this, same model. And what it would do is the back would raise up to a certain percentage. It would activate these little micro switches right down there. So what happens is as this guy rotates, there is a rack and pinion right here. And it comes up and it hits this micro switch right there. You can see the roller head of it right there. So it hits that micro switch and it says, hey, I'm at my physical limitations, and that is actually not a limit switch. That's a crash prevention switch, all right? And this is something that I even failed to realize the first time I seen it, because it just seemed like this table kept giving error codes, and it wasn't actually um, to say, and it's at the upper edge of its limit. So I started thinking about it and thinking about it. These tables are semi-smart, okay? There is some basic logic. And one of the things that you have to pay attention to is this guy right here. This is your kidney bridge. And what it does is it comes up to support the midsection of the body to help keep the spine straight because naturally the body will sag when you lay it on its side. So this is called the kidney bridge and it does go straight up and straight down. That's all its, that's all its functionality. And there is a detector for when this guy is at the very bottom. All right, And I'm going to show that to you. So basically what the table is doing is it would go up to, I don't know, about 45 degrees and then it would start beeping. It would just go beep, beep, and then, you know, it acted like it was at a limit switch. But what was happening is it was hitting this first micro switch right here and it was a crash prevention switch because it thought that your kidney bridge was still up, you know, and you don't want to crash um, the table. You can see here that I've got the risers. These are radiolucent risers. So that means that they will slide a film underneath there while the patient's laying on top and they can uh, expose the film with uh, still radiography. But anyway, this guy here monitors its down position way, way down here. So under the table, you see that there's this little shroud right there. Right here is the switch, and you can see that it's on a slider, so you can adjust it up and down. There is the roller head, and this right here is a rack gear, because it's just a straight rod with grooves cut into it that the, the gear will use to raise and lower it. So that's the rack gear. Comes down and it hits that micro switch, which you can see right now, it's barely, barely hitting this micro switch right here. So this table is also a good candidate for this problem. So what happens if that guy doesn't come down and hit this micro switch, it thinks that this guy is not all the way down, which you can see there's nothing underneath it that's obstructing it and it's not all the way down. That's pretty close though. It's only supposed to be flush with these other panels. So what I would do to test this table is I would raise 
the kidney bridge all the way up, go all the way down until it reaches its hydraulic limitations, and then you adjust the switch. That guy right there, there's two tiny little Phillips screws. See those two tiny little Phillips screws? Those will allow you to loosen up that micro switch and slide it up so that it's better engaging that rack gear right there. Okay? So that is the first problem. Now, the second problem is a more prominent issue. So your symptoms will be your remote. This guy right here, it will not light up. This will not be functional. And when you plug the table in, even with the light on, it won't show a charge indicator. So that's the symptoms. The table appears to be dysfunctional and what's gonna happen is it's gonna be like this one and they're gonna wheel it into a surgical procedure and they're not gonna pay any attention to the fact it has no charge indicator down there. They're gonna start using it and eventually, maybe a day, two, three, four days later, these batteries are gonna be wore down. Cause right now, it's being powered by the batteries. I can use the override, the hydraulic override controls, and I can make this table function off the batteries. But that's only gonna last so long. So what's really going on here? Well, this guy right here is what's going on. And this guy right here is the culprit. This is your remote cable. Connects to the underside down by the emergency stop switch. And what happens is this cable right here will get frayed you can see some of the conductors right there. So what happens is when this cable gets yanked, the wires will stay crimped in the pins and their shielding will get yanked back so it exposes more and more conductor. And then just through natural use, the cables will start flexing right here. Because remember, I always say that things break where soft things meet hard things. And that is your cable exactly where it gets crimped into the pins they'll start to fray and then they start touching other wires and what that does over here on this guy it pops a fuse okay see this guy right here this little white doodad this little square guy right here has got F2 written next to it okay so that guy right there is F2 that is a fuse which actually controls a lot of functionality and it's designed to break. This board has got another problem. See this little white chip down here? These guys that are all over the place. This is a solid state relay. And you can take a look. It looks like there's a little blown spot on that one. So both those will have to get replaced on this board. This is the first time I've ever seen that chip right there blow. But F2 is a replaceable component. I've replaced this on boards before and this guy here is probably going to get refurbished as well. So why does it do that? So the reason that this happens is because this table will operate based on certain voltages on certain pins that come across the remote. And they tell this guy to move. So what they're doing by making that fuse blow, if there's ever a short circuit, it's a safety protection for the table because they don't know where the short is. You know, they don't know if it's in the cable, if it's being crimped, you know, it could be pinched between two metal surfaces. It could be the remote got some fluid inside it and it's starting to short out. But basically what's going on here is they purposely pop that fuse and it shuts down the charge circuit. So the batteries are no longer receiving voltage because you don't know where the short's coming from. And it disables the remote. And it does something that I believe the manufacturer intended to be an error code. Okay? So the first thing that's supposed to do when you plug in a table is you're supposed to see a charge indicator. And if you don't see a charge indicator, then you're not supposed to use the table. Users don't care. But there's not normally error codes for surgical tables, right? There's no place to give an error code. There's not a display. 
So how do you alert the user that something's wrong? Well, you take away the only sign that they have that everything's fine, which is your charge indicator. It's scrolling lights. I'll, I'll throw a picture up so that y'all can see it. And they shut that off. Inadvertently, it also disables the battery charge circuit. But I do believe that they intended that to happen to alert the users that, hey, something's wrong here. And the reason that they blow this board, it's a, like a $1,200 board too, guys. That little fuse, you can change it out. You can fix this yourself. The reason they do it is because they don't know where the short is. They need to shut this table down, get it out of commission, and that's basically how they're going to do it. They're going to force the user to send the table to Biomed so that there can be a further investigation on what's going on because they know that there's an electrical short. So it's designed to pop, and I've seen this probably six, seven times, maybe more, and in some ways it's kind of annoying, but in other ways, thank goodness it happens because I've seen other tables move when fluids get inside the remote or when it starts to short out. And Skytron kind of took it a step further and they just made it so that the table shuts down. But anyway guys, that is the Skytron 3602. It's normally a very good surgical table. And just because it has a problem, doesn't mean it's a bad table. But what it does mean is that the manufacturer is taking extra precautions to make sure that this table is in certainly getting disabled before it gets used on a patient. And unfortunately, the only way that the users usually figure this out is when the batteries run down, sometimes mid-procedure, and then everybody gets flustered because the table is dead in the water. It will not move. It will not charge those batteries. It's dead in the water. And then they get all upset. But really, number one rule for all users is that they should plug in a device and test it out before you use it on a patient. That's rule one. And unfortunately, everybody fails at that one thing. Anyway, guys, that's two problems with surgical tables I've seen in the last 24 hours. Thanks for watching.